top five. Damn. Hi everyone, and um, welcome back to my channel. Um, let me just have a sip of water. Hmm. <sighs> Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Um, for everybody who's new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. And to all the returning subscribers, welcome to another episode of The Things I Struggle With. Um, whew. Now, judging by the title of this video, um, I know that the past two videos that I've done were more so talking about external circumstances of what's affected me and what I've been struggling with. So for example, you know, toxic traits, being around toxic people, toxic relationships, toxic friends. But this particular one was actually inspired by a conversation I had with three people. Like I just came back from a sit down that I had with three people and it just kind of changed my perspective on a lot. I was going to have this conversation, but I think what catapulted me to have this conversation is actually identifying that, yeah, now it's time to really talk about it. So um, the title is The Victim Mentality and It's Double-Edged Sword. Now, for all of you who have a victim mentality, I know all of us, we possess it to some extent. There are some people who can take accountability, but if any of you guys are like me where you always are the victim in your story and the damsel in distress. This one is going to be a very hard pill to swallow. So I guess get a glass of wine, get some water, get anything that is just going to relax you because yeah, this is going to be a hard pill to swallow. Now, lately for me, I've been going through quite a lot and I would call it like some really transformational changes in my life where I felt like I no longer belonged in, in what I thought was comfortable for me. I think um, the tragedies in my life have forced me to kind of identify who is Naledi and what's her role in the world, what's my role on this earth, what's my role in society. And a lot of the time I always wanted to bring the light because I felt like a lot of people just came into my world and brought darkness and took light from me. So I ended up becoming a shadow of who I was. And I spoke about it a lot on my channel. I channeled it into a lot of laughter and happy times. But after today, I started to really kind of change my mindset about a lot. Um, I went to a lunch today. So there is something that I'm planning for my channel. But besides that, I went to a lunch today. I went to go meet up with someone today. I went to go meet up with Lindy. And as soon as I got there, Lindy was there with Palesa. So I know Lindy, Lindy Bugs, and I know Palesa. And they were sitting there together. And we obviously know each other. We're very familiar with one another. And then shortly after, Nomzamo came through. And we all know each other. So it was, it was such a... It felt coincidental. But now that I'm sitting here telling this video, I've always said I don't believe in coincidences. And yeah, I, I, I really don't. So I got to the restaurant, we sat and we had conversations, you know, everything just began very lighthearted, chatty, fun. And we got to a point where obviously they asked me questions about certain things in my life in terms of like friendships and relationships. Like, hey, what happened to this? What happened to this? And when I told the story of the friendships and relationships, I obviously pegged myself as the victim of the story. Not not necessarily, not that it was intentional, but it was like, oh yeah, well, um, we stopped being friends because of ABC, or um, we broke up because of ABC, he did one, two, three, or I stopped talking to her because she did one, two, three, four, five. And as valid as that conversation was, because those are my feelings, I am telling it in um, first person, which would be me from what, from my eyes and from my side, um, the one thing I think they have taught me to pick up today is to be able to identify your own toxic traits. Now, I feel like in that table of people, I share a lot of similarities with uh, Balesa. So Balesa Blue, she and I are very similar in terms of our personas and we're very like, you know, bubbly. We're very out there. We're very, we feel things in waves and lengths, right? So her and I would be the, the bubbles, right? And then you have 
Nomzamo, who is very calm, very sweet, very loving, very stable, doesn't like also still exuding that kind of bubbly feeling, but way more on a lesser tone than us. So her, um, her energy is very much um, kind of centered, you know what I mean? And then uh, you have Lindy. And it was actually like my first time today, I actually got to sit with Lindy and kind of understand her as a person. Cause I've always known who she was, but her and I had never sat long enough to actually have a decent conversation. And as we were telling each other, like the version of events and certain things and whatever, because we kind of know each other, they, we were, I wouldn't say, um, they are my friends, but they are good acquaintances. So I feel comfortable sharing stuff because, you know, we are in one, like, you know, society, social media space. I started to pick up how there are so many different perspectives on it. So telling my story having Palisa explain that, yeah, I understand your concept. And then having Lindy say, but no, you need to pick up where you were wrong in this instance. So when I looked at her initially, I was like, I ain't wrong. What are you talking about? And she then started unpacking how other people don't view or like, or other people don't see it the same way that I see it. Right. But Essentially, nonetheless, we started going into a really deep conversation about traumas and how traumas really impact um, our ability to interact with people and how traumas kind of start defining you and your character and, and things like that. And before I left, they asked me to read this book uh, by Oprah called, um, I think it's called What Happened to You by Oprah Winfrey. And when they started explaining that book, I think I, by the time I sat down with him and had a conversation, I had already told God that this is the pinnacle of my life where I don't want my emotions to control me anymore. I don't want to be in situations where I need people and I'm dependent on them and I'm desperate for love and desperate for affection because I feel like I'm one of those people <clears throat> who believed that even with the even with the greatest gifts that are intangible, there is no better gift than the gift of loving and being loved in return. Of which, to a certain degree, I still believe that. But the reality of it is, it 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 puts you in in a very desperate, low state of mind when you can't get to you know that feeling of elation and happiness and what I thought was elation and happiness back then right so the one thing that i did want to talk about is the victim mentality and how it is so easy for us people to always place ourselves in the victim mentality like i look at a lot of things that have happened or transpired between friends and i and i i, I i'm very quick to say you know what i am a very objective person like i do understand where you're coming from but i feel like you did one, two, three, four, five to completely invalidate me. So by invalidating me, I can't validate your feelings. And I mean, the normal human being would work like that, right? So now let me dumb it down for anybody who just feels like I'm saying a whole lot of like hogwash. Okay. Imagine if this was a bottle of wine. I, I cry every day about how I don't like my weight, how... I feel like I'm not pretty or I'm not beautiful. I'm not, I, I'm very much self-conscious. But what are the changes that I have made to start seeing the difference in my life? None. I mean, I drank every day. I, you know, went out frequently. I didn't really have a healthy diet. I do have a career on YouTube for mukbangs, but... If you actually think about it, I don't release that much mukbang, so you can't even blame that, to be really honest with you. Uh, but the point is that I'm trying to make is that I complain about things that I actively do not change. And that is the victim mentality. That is the, oh my God, everything is just so sad and nobody loves me and da 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 And like, it's like, but why don't you love yourself? Or, yeah, this person hurt me and da da da, -da but... When are you going to start identifying what you have done to hurt the person in return? Now, I've had a hard time doing that. And when I sat at that table and had three very mature, very nice women 
start to basically unpack the possibility that I could be exhibiting my traumas onto my loved ones, it just, it hurt me. It hurt me because you're sitting here thinking that I, it's not wrong unless you are programmed or taught to believe that it's wrong. So, for example, if I have a conversation with a friend and I start raising my voice and the friend is like, I don't like that you raised your voice. And I retaliate by saying, well, I raised my voice because I was getting upset. It's trying to find justifications in, in hurting people or, or trying to find justifications in your own bad behavior and actively choosing not to change it, which is something that I struggle with, right? This is a tough one. Not to say that in every single instance of my life, in every single obstacle, conflict, I take on the victim role, but I have noticed how it's so easy to single out the things that you have done or, or single out the things that they have done, but completely forget the role that you played, whether or not it be in or out of character, whether or not it be in or uh, based off of your traumas or not. The double-edged sword of the victim mentality is that nothing changes. You keep making those same mistakes. You keep treating people the same way because you are refusing to identify what your toxic traits are. And I mean, it's a tough conversation to have because... I mean, I'm going to be really honest with you guys. I didn't have the greatest, you know, upbringing in, in the sense that, yes, comfortable, went to a good school. But the, the surroundings of how I grew up, the way I was treated by family members, the way I felt disregarded even in, at school, my university career, to a point where I made this comment at the table and I was like people only are nice to me now and it, it's all fake and Lindy said it's probably not fake it's as a result of your traumas you refuse to believe that people actually like you because you're so used to people mistreating you bullying you abusing you well that abuse very subjective not not physical maybe like an emotional aspect of it right so you guys all know that my parents got divorced when I was really young. Um, I lived with my mom and my mom was my mom. She had her own toxic traits about her, which made our living environment extremely difficult. And my mom passed away before we could even develop any sort of maternal relationship where she could understand me and I could understand her. I mean, I was young, I was 15. And when she did pass away, we were not at any point. I, I, I was a teenager, I was rebellious. I didn't understand. It was always like I was competing against the golden child, that being my sister, right? Because my sister used to pass, she used to get A's, she was deputy head girl, she was head girl, she was this, she was this. And I wasn't any of that. I was the opposite. So imagine living in an environment where your siblings are always praised over you, right? Now imagine that circumstance. And then going to school, more or less the same circumstance, more or less feeling like people always have really negative things to say about you. Um, one of my, <laughs> I told my ex this once that I have a really, like every time I sweat, I get a trauma because of something an ex-boyfriend said to me in grade eight. And I, I can never forget that moment. Like that moment, it plays in my head from time to time. It plays in my head every single time I think that I'm in a room or like my traumas will build up again. And um, high school was no different. Um, I think high school only became bearable for me in grade 11 and matric. And that was only because I chose to focus on my school books and I lived with my dad, so I didn't really have that many friends. Uh, in like you know the south so I went to university university was was great like I I, I had friends but I don't really I, I wasn't the golden girl I wasn't like part of the cool squad I wasn't part of the it squad um 
I think for a really long time when you feel like you're overlooked or when people feel like they have something to say about you and you become defensive, you build a guard where you're so used to people saying negative things about you or to you that when they say positive things, you just can't seem to take it in. And even when it's criticism, even when it's coming from a place of love, how do you accept someone telling you that, hey, na lady, um, I genuinely think you're a great person, but you have a really deep issue of, let's say, not listening to when I speak to you or not choosing to hear my uh, concerns over the sound of your own pain. And, and that's a real thing. <laughs> and um, when I look back at it, that's, that's, that's the role of victim mentality that's played in my life for a really long time. I had to fight to get here. I had to fight to be recognized. I had to fight in my career. I had to fight to be the best. I had to fight, 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 fight. Nothing came easy for someone like me. And... And when I say nothing came easy, I don't obviously mean from like, let's completely disconnect this from obviously my family is set up, right? I'm talking about everything that I've acquired on my own. It was never an, and it, it was never easy because it was always fighting against everything that everyone's ever said to me that I thought didn't matter. But it was always fueling me to be better. It was always fueling me to be the best in the room. It was always fueling me to study harder. It was always fueling me to, you know, just be the best version of myself. But the best version of myself was built on a whole bunch of worst versions of myself. It's, it's a whole lot of broken ladies that were built to make this tough person who has a really great exterior. But the, the internal shadow work needs so much you know it's so much i think personally it's a hard thing to accept to know that okay now let me say this right guys one thing about my dad in particular he's sort of like a perfectionist right he hates mistakes and i hate them too and it's a result of him like he always says prevention is better than gear so if you don't like for example don't take the risk if you know that there is risk you know so like prevent it so that you don't have to find a cure for it. So don't have unprotected sex if you don't want to fall pregnant. That is, I was thinking of any other example and that was the only one that occurred in my head. So I was just gonna give you that as that one. My dad is that person. So imagine disappointing someone like that, right? And now remember that my dad is a normal human being. Now that I have this relationship with him where I can tell him that I am going through things and he actually understands, I painted my dad as this, I don't want to call him a monster, but as this tyrant because that's how I was raised. Like I, I felt like I wasn't raised with the same care and love. There was a whole lot of fierceness around me. There was a whole lot of strength I had to exude and that was obviously thrust upon me. It was like a, I don't know. It's a whole lot of traumas where you start to realize that maybe, maybe you're not the victim. Maybe you're just as guilty, but because you didn't do anything that could be considered wrong by society, you choose not to see it. Maybe every person has some sort of narcissistic traits about them. Like, I know for a fact that one of the things that I've battled to deal with for a very long time is my, my anger and my temper because I, I can light up, you know? Well, the old me used to. The new me needs to count to 10. The new me needs to sing a song. The new me needs to talk in the mirror like Isa. But what if even in not doing something that is considered wrong, you're still doing something to hurt somebody else, but because it's not considered wrong, you can't see past that. What if we're all just narcissists in our own way and we, we call it toxic traits because we all kind of exhibit similar things and it's so easy to blame the other party in question and it's so difficult to say that maybe, 
Maybe I contributed to the failure of that relationship. Maybe I contributed to the failure of that friendship. Maybe I contributed to the failure of that relationship with a parent, you know? Because, I mean, it hurts to know that I can't even show my mom all the good things that I've done, but I still feel even more bad for not having tried to build something with her before she passed on, you know? You're just sitting with that guilt all the time. You're sitting with that what if. You're sitting with that, but he did me wrong. She did me wrong. But in some small, strange way, we all have things about us that might not be right to the next person. But until we're willing to see it and until we're willing to see beyond our feelings, we'll never truly understand others and we'll never truly connect. And it'll always be the double-edged sword of the victim mentality, not being able to connect with people because you don't want to see beyond others' mistakes. You don't want to see beyond your own faults. You don't want to see beyond your own you know, shortcomings. You believe your shortcomings make you this amazing person. Granted, sure. But what if your shortcomings contribute to making somebody else feel less? So yeah. That's my 30 minutes of the things that I'm struggling with. And you know when I look back at it now, it's like everybody who came into my life, whether whether it was for a season or a reason, you know, The abandonment issues refused for me to let those I knew were toxic go. So I kept them in my reach. And even in keeping them in my reach, I made it hell. Because how else was I going to, how else was I going to get that closure of of, of being put through what I was put through? But the abandonment of being without you seems far worse. But that's the self-love. That's the very low self-esteem issues that need to really, you know, kind of delve in. But I do remember I told you guys that I would never make these videos too long. So think about that, you know. I, I definitely am going to get that book. I'm thankful to Lindy Bugs, um, Balisa Blue, and Nomzamo Lamini for actually showcasing elements that, you know, elements that... I felt like I was getting to that point, but them just having the conversation with me and it being so organic, but in that space, I felt like, I felt like I was drowning. I wanted to cry, but I had to laugh through it because that is the coping mechanism. So yeah, um, thanks to those ladies. They helped me gather the courage to do this video. And I hope it's some food for thought for some of you guys to treat others with kindness, to try and understand others before understanding yourself. I mean, understand yourself, but when you do listen to the concerns of others, try to, you know, detach from yourself and your self-interests and, you know, and, and maybe our connections with people will be better. Hopefully. But that's just me. So yeah, guys, we've reached the end of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, Let me know if there are any things you'd like me to talk about. But until then, that is the end of the things that I struggle with, episode three. I'll see you guys in the next one.